Hi everyone, how are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. It's Anton back in the studio uh, with another round of uh, interviews with potential and interesting startups. Uh, today I've got another wonderful guest, uh, one of the brilliant projects that uh, we're closely cooperating with and uh, having a lot of fun talking to and we just decided to pick up them for a short round of interview. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ron Friedman uh, in our show from Maui. Uh, please, Ron, uh, introduce yourself, just a couple of words to our subscribers and walk us through uh, through your project, if, if that's possible. So, thanks, Anton, thanks. Hello, guys. Uh, happy to see you here. Happy to hear you, Anton. So, uh, my name is Ron Friedman. I'm co-founder and CEO of Maui Solutions Company. So, we are a medical device startup. Our main background is all related to cardiac diseases. We created wearable device which can measure EKG, first lead EKG, and can predict some strokes uh, by detection of atrial fibrillation, one of the most uh, dangerous state of the heart. So uh, during the COVID-19, our team decided to make a, a short pivot. It's not a, like a full pivot of the company, just to allocate some resources, our R&D resources, first of all, to create some solutions which can be very helpful and applicable to the COVID-19 business. So we decided to use our devices and our platform uh, system of mobile applications, dashboards, predictive analytics uh, to predict some uh, COVID-19 uh, outcomes and to make some uh, uh, predictive analytics on this disease on early stage, first of all. So it's gotcha. short about me. Okay. Okay. Well, well that, 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 that's awesome. That's awesome. My question here is regarding the stage that you're on right now. Could you please tell us a little bit more about what kind of achievements have you already managed to do and uh, what's coming next for you? Yeah, so the project uh, started four years ago. It was like a pet project from my university, my bachelor, my master degree. So my background is machine learning all related to biosignal analysis. Uh, me and two of my colleagues from university decided to uh, make this project available as a platform for ECG analysis. Uh, it takes four years for us to bring devices, to bring uh, uh, all in-house R&D from hardware, from software, from uh, machine learning to production manufacturing in China to create a full ecosystem of devices, as I mentioned. For now, we are serious a startup if we talk about the VC classification. So we have some sales and revenue in US. Our main goal for now to uh, submit FDA. FDA is already submitted to receive FDA and to be able to sell this device as a remote patient monitoring device uh, for elderly people, for people who suffered from atrial fibrillation. Uh, as I mentioned, the main cause of stroke. And uh, so we are now in the active business development phase to start to launch some projects in US. Awesome, that's awesome. So that's the bracelet, right? That you're having on your hand right now, on your wrist right now, so this is the one. Yeah. So this is a device uh, which looks uh, pretty simple. I mean, the same to uh, standard fitness tracker. Our initial idea was to create device, medical device with medical grade signals, which will be, uh, which will look the same to the fitness tracker. So not bulky devices, not ugly device. You can imagine the medical devices, the big devices on your chest, uh, something which are not sexy and so on. So we combine like the, the power of medical devices, of data collected from these devices and our design uh, facilities to create a really good looking device. So mm -hmm. uh, I hope this device looks good enough. Yeah, that looks, that looks just a, a, any other smart watch, you know, stylish. Absolutely. Look, so Absolutely. Our idea was just to uh, help people who suffered from some uh, cardiac diseases not to be uh, like a separate people, not to be uh, people with some bu bulky, ugly devices and so on. Just be the same to other people, but uh, have extra medical functions which can help to save your life, first of all. All right, all right. So now, besides just looking sexy as hell, now they can be actually caring about their health, you know, and, uh, you know, have a use of it. Besides yeah. just watching, you know, as a tool, watch, just you, watching the time, you know, we're checking what time is it. So maybe, yeah, that's, that, that, that's quite working out in, in this case. Listen. Yeah, when we started, when, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when we started, so like four years ago, uh, most devices was just for, as you mentioned, like watches to, to, to see the time and so on. Uh, but uh, time has changed. So uh, a lot of devices, also Apple Watch, Samsung decided to be 
kind of medical devices. It's not, this is not medical devices, they are not FDA approved, they are not for uh, with some intended use in healthcare, but they pretend to be medical devices. They try to measure some vital signs. They allocate a big budget, like billions of dollars to, for R&D to create new vital signs, uh, data collection, some algorithms and so on. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, also good from one hand. From, from the other hand, it's competitive market. So we receive some competitors as Apple, as Samsung. Uh, and in future, I think that uh, they will be in this market. Uh, but to be honest, the medical market, the healthcare market is really huge. Uh, the first one. And the second one that uh, uh, I've mentioned it like four years ago about the preventive predictive medicine. It was uh, like uh, a buzzword. Yes, uh, I've uh, studied in Singularity University. So I've learned uh, a lot about the predictive, preventive, personalized medicine. It was like a concept. Uh, but for now, I think it's only one way to survive. So uh, even in pandemic uh, time, so only one way to make some um, diagnostic available, it's preventive diagnostic. No chance to make uh, like reactive diagnostic when the, we receive the billions of millions of people uh, infected by, for example, by COVID-19, it's not a deal for healthcare system. So they don't know what to do. Uh, only one way to prevent it and to make some personalized uh, predictive screenings. So that's why I think that we are on, on the right way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the right thing about the preventive medicine. I think that's the key regarding the health care system in general, because you know, when, when you're actually facing the problem and you're trying to treat it post, you know, post occurrence. So that's, that's, that's no use of it because you're, you're, you're starting to rewind everything back, you know, to figure out what was the origin, but you are talking about you being able to track the origin from the beginning, you know, in order to prevent the future happening from it. So I think, I think that's the, that's the actual future solution behind it. And I think that's what should be the goal in all medicine, right? And not to actually treat something, but to prevent it from happening in the first place. So that's, that, that's yeah, just correct. correct. Uh, I mean that uh, it was, it was, it was like five years ago. The concept is not new. Uh, a lot of opinion leaders, uh, medical doctors, professors uh, from the whole world talking about it. But for now, it's not a concept. It's only one way, only one strategy, how to survive. I mean, for the healthcare system. And doesn't matter for healthcare system of uh, uh, China, of US, of Spain, of Ukraine, of Russia, and so on. So. Only one way for now to change the whole process system, all business processes in healthcare, from reactive medicine to proactive medicine, to really preventive, truly preventive medicine. Got you, got you. Okay. Uh, You talked about, you mentioned big names like Samsung, you mentioned Apple. So I assume you're taking a big hit on them, you know, like in in, in this case, and you know, uh, well, what, well, what's about it? Why, what, what is the reason behind it? Why you are basically the only one or one of the earliest adopters and you know, receiving the FDA certificate and actually getting that advantage, you know, in the medical sphere and not basing yourself in a kind of fitness area like, you know, so um, what, 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 what's the reason? What's the, you know, what's the drive behind it? What, 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 what did you, why did you decide to make it in the first place? Why go FDA if, not the competitors, uh, like, you know, unlike competitors, they're going in the fitness direction. So, I mean, imagine they're just sitting right now and like, hopefully they'll watch us in one day, but then they, they, they see that you're taking, that they're taking a big L right now because you basically proving them that, look, we are the early adopters and you're going to be the ones that are going to be behind it, you know, so creating something real medical for it. Uh, so, uh, this is a very good question. So, uh, I would answer it this way. First of all, uh, I would believe that this is not no possible to create the common device. I mean, common like Apple Watch device, which suits like for all, for people from, for young people, for teenagers, for uh, general population and for elderly as well. So all medical devices should be very, very specific. So uh, we cannot cover all, all, all target audiences. For example, our device target, first of all, for people 65 years old and up. So um, I would not believe that Apple can be the fully competitive in this market because Apple is a generic device, which you can sell in uh, all shops, um, in 
Apple shops and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, it will be not trusted by doctors. So we've talked a lot of, with doctors in the US, first of all. All of them mentioned that Apple Watch looks like a toy. Yes, it's a good device, good looking, with a very good uh, functionality and so on. But for example, how you can use this device as a medical device if the battery life is like 12 hours per day. So it's not, it's not enough. It's not enough for a medical device. And for elderly people who are not very um, uh, good in technology, so they have a lot of problems and troubles how to set up this device how to operate it with this device. You, need, you should have iPhone, you should have extra software and so on. So no way to, to use this device for elderly people, first of all. So sometimes, for probably, probably in future, Apple decided to make the separate product, which will be only for elderly people. It can be, but as I mentioned before, uh, for us, it's, uh, uh, relatively easy to compete with some big companies because they focus first of all on big revenue from big revenue streams. So in B2C, for example, I mean like for Apple Watch, just to use the marketing power, the power of the brand of Apple to sell this device, looks like a, like a good strategy for the future, yes. Uh, and to sell this device like an ecosystem device for a unit to, to you should buy uh, for example, laptop, MacBook, uh, you should buy app, uh, iPhone, you should buy uh, Apple Watch. And once you have a full ecosystem of devices, which is very suitable for you, so it's very easy to integrate, easy to operate and so on. Uh, but all this about the user experience of the daily life, but not of the medical user experience. So I would believe that uh, medical devices should be more specific and more uh, related to healthcare system than just to common devices. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, focus a little bit more on the pandemic, you know, and all situation around it. I don't want to go into numbers and your predictions, you know, regarding when do you think it's going to finish or maybe, you know, to evaluate a I little bit. Of that. We have no predictive analytics to, to find the time when COVID-19 goes out. Exactly. Exactly. It's just going to be us, you know, like, you know, talking about our opinion and you may have your opinion. I might have my own one. No, my question yeah. here, it will be more related towards your business model. You know, how did it, how did it affect your business in the first place? Did it actually help you somehow or did it slow you down? So that's that's the first question that I want to focus on. Yeah. Uh, also, thanks for this question. It's really it's the right question. Uh, I would answer that. From the one hand, in our strategic processes, for example, FDA, uh, some our uh, next generation device manufacturer, for sure it slowed down because of uh, all started in January uh, with uh, some uh, problems in our shipments from China, with our manufacturing in China. Uh, after uh, the COVID-19 spreads uh, through the whole world and we faced with some problems in our uh, small R&D office in Italy, after in our uh, so with some our US clients and so on. Uh, also, FDA tried to uh, focus first of all now on devices so which are able to help in COVID-19 fight, yes. And uh, for sure, it slowed down some our processes uh, from the one hand. From the other hand, uh, we have already existing platform. I mean, uh, ecosystem of mobile applications, uh, of devices, uh, of dashboards of predictive analytics, which are able to sell before, but in cardiac uh, field, and it was pretty like uh, pretty easy for us to customize this platform and start some uh, sales, just direct sales to companies as corporate wellness health use case for measuring temperature, for example, for basic measurement of the more vital signs like uh, blood pressure, like uh, oxygen saturation, like uh, temperature, like ECG and so on. So, and we use this device, this device, you can see it's our new device, uh, which can measure in one time, like for, for three minutes, all basic vital signs you can even imagine. So EKG, saturation, uh, blood pressure, uh, respiratory rate, uh, heart rate variability, 
and some uh, all and other indexes which are derivatives from these biosignals. Also, we use a little bit uh, a little questionnaires, and based on all this data collected from one person, we can predict uh, the risk of the COVID-19. So it's like a system for early prediction of uh, COVID-19. I mean, for example, if people are in the quarantine or just sitting home, no need to go to hospital to make some screenings. For sure, if you have no specific symptoms, for sure, if you have some uh, fever or uh, high temperature or shortness in the breath and so on, you should go to the doctor. You should call uh, 911 and so on. Uh, but for basic population, this device can make some early predictions and screenings for um, prevent uh, some people going out. And this is not like uh, for the current pandemic, I mean, not only for this or next two weeks, three weeks, uh, even after quarantine will be finished, uh, we'll able to use this device as a medical solution for all companies, even for governments. So we received some quotes from governments. I cannot disclose the names of governments, yes, but some European countries, some Asia countries, some North American countries also. Uh, so uh, just quotes for this device and for this system. Uh, the main idea to um, make all screenings available from home. I mean, basic screenings. We are not in the position to make some diagnosis. We are not the competitor to PCR tests and so on. No, we are not silver bullet. We are not treatment. We just a device for predictive screenings. So you can use this device with multiple biosensors bio to uh, collect almost all existing now vital signs and some our predictive analytics just to predict some uh, cases of COVID-19. Because imagine the user journey of the employee. So you wake up, you go to your job, for example, and uh, near the business center, you face with some screenings and screenings uh, in, the, in the screening, it occurs that uh, you have a temperature and you should go home or you should go to hospital. So, but the whole way from your home to this business center, you was in contact with some people and so on. And it looks not safe. But imagine if you will wake up, just make three, four, five basic measurements and all data goes through, the, through our application to our platform, shared with medical assistance, insurance, or uh, some health dashboards uh, for company. And automatically you receive notification. So you should go for work today or you cannot go to your job today, and so on. What? Uh, and the last but not least, uh, this question also asking, uh, was asking me like a hundred times, how we can predict fraud. For example, if I wake up and give my device to my wife, just to, to accelerate my time and so on. Uh, um, uh, we use our ECG-based biometric authentication. It was patented like three years ago by our company. It was like a separate project of our company, it was a pet project of our R&D. So we find out that uh, EKG, this is the same to fingerprint to retina uh, as a unique biometric identifier. So, and we use EKG in our device to make, uh, like to predict some fraud. No, not to predict, to prevent some fraud, to detect some fraud. So. If I will give this device to my son, to my wife, and so on, it will not not work. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, um, I'm I'm impressed uh, in the first place. I'm impressed because you were able to um, I'm kind of okay. Let me let me rewind a little bit back. So my next question uh, was, um, you know, regarding the um, it, whether it has affected somehow your model, uh, whether it has affected somehow maybe your planning of your products and redesign or something, but you, were, you partially answered this question. So you mentioned the new device that you just shown us uh, basically can also cover some of the necessities that, that we're having right now. For example, as the early uh, COVID-19 uh, you know, detection. I mean, okay, let's, let's, not, let's not maybe abbreviate it by saying detection, but at least it can help people that are not suffering from heart symptoms. So. It's it's kind of that you weren't uh, you weren't uh, planning on creating this device specifically to target this problem, but it resulted in a way that can it can also be useful for the actual problem that we are having right now. Right. Am I understanding you correctly? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's wonderful. That that that's so good. Okay, well done. 
regarding this question, um, I, I've got nothing else to say. So uh, let me focus on something positive in here as well. Um, so I know that you recently were able to close down the round for fundraising as, as far as I understand it. So congratulations uh, from my side. Mm -hmm. Um, walk us through a little bit about your business model. So actually, have you thought about changing it or maybe have you changed it because of the actual problems right now circulating around the world? So it's not only about the COVID, right? It's, it's also about the economy. It's also about the social aspects of all of this, you know? So did it somehow change the, the business model that you adopted previously or you didn't notice anything? Uh, okay, okay. I would answer uh, ye yes and no simultaneously. So first of all, our main business model is working with insurance companies uh, as CPT codes for remote patient monitoring. This is the way when um, national insurer in US, like Medicare, uh, pay some money for you for like medical device software provider uh, for uh, data collection from patients uh, which are chronic in chronic conditions. First of all, vital signs. It can be EKG, it can be uh, blood pressure, it can be saturation, doesn't matter. So, uh, doctor gives this device for free and you receive some reimbursement from a uh, national insurer. And uh, doctor receives another amount of money for supervising the patient for like 20 minutes uh, in a month. So, this is our main basic model, uh, which we are going to sell this device uh, in nearest future in US. But for sure, the whole healthcare system in US now focus first of all on COVID-19. For sure, we have some um, slowdown in our sales activities in this case, I mean, uh, but uh, we uh, find out the new business model. Uh, I've no, I've no thoughts, have no thoughts before about it, but for now, it looks very sexy, like platform as a service system. So we can deliver to the companies, not only to the medical companies, it can be just uh, uh, some companies who has a lot of employers, like thousands, hundred thousands of employers, uh, to measure the temperature and other vital signs, depends on the use case. And just uh, this case works as a platform as a service. I mean, the same to Microsoft, the same to Salesforce. We deliver the platform, we customize this platform to client. Uh, we uh, ship devices, we ship the whole infrastructure and uh, they are able to make some uh, screenings, populational screenings, uh, uh, predictive screenings, and so on. And they can uh, drag and drop some functions. I mean, uh, for example, uh, some companies ask us, guys, could you ship to us only devices with a raw platform, with raw data, and that's all. Uh, other companies ask, could you share with us also your predictive analytics? Uh, some companies ask, could you create a, like, a risk uh, scoring for us based on your mathematics so uh, the customizations are really different uh, and the company profiles are also real different uh, but it looks very sustainable business model when we have existing platform which uh, suits uh, all uh, and meet all expectations of our clients and we need just to customize it to local clients and so on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely new business model for us because uh, before, we worked only with our device, with our platform, uh, on only on cardiac cases. And for now, it looks like we have extra opportunity to deliver our devices and platform as a service, as I mentioned before. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, annually or monthly uh, recurring revenue. So, it's close to SaaS, uh, software as a service, but I would... Uh, uh, call it uh, platform as a service because devices also included because some main maintenance specific uh, deployment also included. So it looks uh, close to platform as a service than software as a service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, kind of coming up to the, uh, you know, some of the maybe things that you've mentioned to find or explore during this, you know, situation, um, what kind of feedback or maybe what kind of life hack would you be able to give to other startups that, you know, uh, maybe facing difficulties right now uh, on thinking, you know, weighing on opportunities, whether shall I actually start, you know, pitching myself to the investors right now or shall I invest, uh, you know, I mean, shall I just wait, you know, and, uh, you know, see how it's, how it's going. What's, what's your take on that? 
uh, Anton, to be honest, probably I'm not the right person to advise because now we are in a rush. I mean, yes, it's like crypto activities like two, three years ago and uh, people who was involved in crypto activities like four years, like 10 years ago was rocking uh, three, four years ago because they was truly a a experts. They was not like uh, experts uh, with uh, one week education, what is crypto and so on, what's blockchain. They was truly experts. Uh, I see for now, for us, this is the same situation. So when I mentioned about preventive medicine, about uh, remote patient monitoring, about uh, device-based connected health, uh, like combination of AI and variables to collect uh, big data and so on, all uh, I was supported by like by all uh, CEOs of the companies, uh, all investors and so on. But all of them tell, told me that Ron, it's a good idea, it's a good uh, like vision, but this is not real now in our existing situation and so. On. So it's more, more like a miracle, like a vision, like a strategy and so on. Uh, but my idea was it should be because this is only one way how we can work in, in real life. The same to sharing economy, the same to Uber, the same to Airbnb. It was not a, like, uh, it was not a challenge for Airbnb, yes? I mean, it was a challenge of Airbnb, but uh, it should happen. So no chance to, to stay in, in the world without it. So uh, this is the same situation now probably with uh, all telemedicine, with remote patient monitoring, with device-based screens and so on. Uh, as you know, the healthcare system, one of the slowest system, I mean, in the world, one of the most bureaucracy, uh, bureaucratic system and so on. And uh, only, probably only this situation, only uh, that uh, like uh, thousands of people can make a great contribution unfortunately in great contribution uh in changing this system they have no chance not to change now mm -hmm. uh to startups uh i would recommend to to stay for sure in your burn rate i mean not to expand your cost and so on uh, first of all to pay attention all, or all key employers uh all, all because uh, uh we are faced with a lot of challenges during the last four years, different challenges, different problems and so on. Uh, as I mentioned, we are self-funded company, so self-invested company. So we have no previous investors. So we allocate our own money, our own investments, our, our revenue reinvested in company and so on. So I know that your team is your key. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the main you can uh, like save in your team, uh, in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, it's uh, the most important. The second one, to, to adapt your business model to the new reality, yes? Uh, the world is changing and you need to understand how you can be profitable, how you can be successful in this world. Uh, I would, uh, I'm not a person who are like from the startup uh, business because all my previous projects uh, was related to real business. I mean, not from, uh, from IT, from software development, from different businesses. Uh, but not a VC-based business with some uh, wild multipliers and so on. So company with zero revenue with like, I don't know, 10 billion valuation, yes. Uh, also, I was involved in uh, work. I, was to, uh, I used to work in a hedge fund as a, as a portfolio analyst and so on. So I'm very realistic. So I know that all my multipl multipliers based on my revenue, first of all, for sure, we can make some predictions in future revenue and, and can receive like, uh, better multipliers, but all based on your revenue, all based on your business, first of all. So for startups who try to um, like increase the valuation just for R by R&D, by some uh, uh, like, uh, ideas and so on, it's time to focus on business. It's time to focus on revenue. It's time to focus on uh, uh, real situation. So my advice will be very easy, very transparent. So just focus on your revenue and your multipliers will be very high. Okay. Your revenue-based company with existing business, with existing clients. And as uh, one of Ukrainian entrepreneurs, great Ukrainian entrepreneurs mentioned uh, that your main investor should be your client. So if your clients pay to you, it's the best investor you can receive, mm -hmm. the best one. More clients, 
more investments. You can reinvest this money to satisfy these clients, to make your product affordable for other clients, for other people. Doesn't matter, it's B2C company, it's B2B company. So focus on your clients, focus on your business, receive payments and receive money from your clients and you received already the best investors you can receive. Thank you. Thank you so much. For that, 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 is, that is awesome advice. I think that is super valuable for um, all the startups, I think, and all the growing companies as well. And just, you know, general rule, a golden rule for, for everyone in, in, in this area. Um, my question now will be, uh, you know, before, before I'm let you go, um, it will be a little bit, you know, would say more provocative, but maybe you, you, you won't consider it. So that's, that's good for us as well. Um, right. I will be talking from the perspective of, uh, you know, any viewer, any customer, potential customer, or just, uh, let's say subscriber of our channel. So they're watching you right now and they thinking, okay, let's rewind everything. These guys are, are, you know, going really serious. They're, they're obtaining FDA. They just closed down the fundraising round. Uh, they're taking a hit at Samsung and Apple and realistically, you know, they, they, they prove it to be this way. Not the, the fact that they just talk about it, you know, thinking, oh, well, one day we will beat them, you know, like you're actually showing, you know, that you're already dominating in this case. My question now, you know, uh, basically representing the opinion from the, from the viewers will be when shall we expect you to be the king of the show, you know, in the, in, in this case with a device, when, when we will be able to come to the shops if we can to actually get it for for our use for customer use uh when will we see the the fact that you know the the um the headlines you know that maui beats i don't know like maui beats uh in sales uh whatever you know whoever so when 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 shall we expect that from you yeah anton it's a good question it's prov not provocative question it's a good it's the right question i've answered every morning myself first of all yes so first of all we are b2b company uh, our key competence to sell uh, solutions to businesses and also our devices our platforms we also sell to hospitals to to insurance companies to healthcare providers doesn't matter uh, so uh, as a part for example of us system you are able to use not to buy this device no need to pay from you it's already paid by medicare to use this device as a uh, uh, risk group of people who is in a risk group, in cardiac risk group, 65 years plus and so on, with some comorbidities, with some chronic conditions. Uh, you are able to use this device, I think, in the autumn, in the fall of this year. Uh, I hope so. If the situation in, uh, in the world will be better than now, the first one. The second one, um, uh, you uh, you asked me about uh, also about uh, the first uh, when we are able to sell this uh, worldwide and the second question was could you basically me? basically you becoming the king of the show you know just generally you dominating the market and you know okay. you okay. you feeling the full force of yeah. it. Uh, we are a pretty young company, like four years from scratch, from idea, from just some algorithms from university. Uh, it's very, very uh, small amount of money. It's really a little in, uh, in the medical device business. So all companies who are working now, it's like 25, 30 years old companies. Uh, this domain is very, we are R&D based company. So all our products uh, uh, come from our R&D, mm -hmm. uh, all certifications like FDA, all testing, clinical trials sometimes takes a year. Mm -hmm. So for medical device business, even not even medical device, for healthcare business, for software platforms in healthcare, for years it's ju it's nothing. So I hope that we are on the way. Uh, you know, uh, this is a very good uh, picture in singularity uh, that uh, exponential curve looks absolutely the same at the beginning with linear curve. So even from the mathematical perspective, uh, uh, on this uh, on the beginning, uh, these curves are relatively the same. Uh, they call it deceptive stage. They mm -hmm. have like 60 paradigm and this is deceptive stage when uh, you think that your exponential technology uh, looks the same to some linear technologies, but in, on, on the one, like in one time period, uh, exponential technology 
uh, booming, like twice, uh, twice per day, per year, doesn't matter, it depends on the metric. And linear will be the same, the same to linear. So uh, I hope that uh, our technology is exponential and uh, it sometimes looks that we are like linear growth, yes, and uh, we are on the deceptive stage, uh, but I hope that uh, in near future we'll uh, be exponential company who will grow like two times per month, per year, doesn't matter. Ron, I will be rooting for you. So uh, I'll, get, I'll get what it takes, you know, to, to bring everyone to US first so that all my relatives, uh, you know, old friends or, you know, my, I don't know, uh, some family members, you know, can get the bracelets done. Um, personal fan of yours, uh, rooting for you and for your company. I'm going to let you go now. Uh, and before we just close up, I wanted to thank you one more time for this wonderful opportunity to share your thoughts with us. For me, it was a great pleasure uh, to, uh, to talk to you today. And I think that'll be awesome also for all of our community to see, uh, you know, what the, what the success in the early stage is looking like, you know, and uh, you see the potential and maybe able to, you know, generate something out of this interview as well, you know, from the perspective of potential partners, maybe some of your potential clients are watching it right now in the US. So I'm really hoping, uh, you know, that uh, it can possibly help you somehow as well. So from my side, I just wanted to thank you very much for this time. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to you again. And uh, please keep us informed about your project. We'll uh, send the link down in the description as well to your project. So you, uh, so you uh, describe, I mean, subscribers will be able to visit uh, Ron's page and, you know, see everything, you know, the project, what it is looking like mm -hmm. and, and test it. So thank you one more time. Wish you a wonderful day. And uh, see you, see you soon. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for interview, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.